Hey everyone, Stellar here again. Sorry for the long gap between videos, things have been kind of hectic for me, but today things have been better, uh, so I decided I wanted to get into uh, doing masks on Substance Painter. Uh, we'll be going into detail on how to use masks, as well as how you can use alphas and other methods to obtain a good result in using Substance Painter. Uh, we'll be doing it on this barrel that I've made in Blender really quickly, just something simple, just so I can show you guys um, what we're talking about as far as, you know, adding details, making stuff look realistic, and also um, having fun and doing a good job at it. So right now, I, I went ahead and did this. Uh, I just wanted to show you uh, what it would look like once you get something pretty much done. Uh, well, we have everything on different layers and everything, so that way it gives us the freedom to turn off or turn on certain things, as well as using fill layers. Uh, we were able to create all of these and still edit them at any given time. So if we want this barrel to be red, for whatever reason, we still can, and the masks will still stay up to date and all that. So, I'll go ahead and get started on a clean barrel. Alright everyone, I went ahead and put all of those textures into a single file so that way we can just go ahead and hit the little I button and it will hide it. If your substance painter does not look like mine, do not worry, I haven't really changed much. I've just decided to keep the layers tab open and everything else closed until I need it and I can just reference these at any given time. So moving along, when it comes to making things in Substance Painter, it's like a three-dimensional uh, Photoshop. So you want to do everything by layers, kind of how things are in real life. So in real life, we're going to have, uh, for a barrel here, we're going to have a base coat, which is metal. Let me go ahead and control C that. We'll go ahead and add in these layers here. First one will be metal. Second one will be base coat. And the third one will be the top coat. So we'll go ahead and hide these two and we'll just go into our properties for the fill tab here. And we will crank up the metallic. Now my substance painter is set as uh, PBR metallic rough. Uh, it's just a standard uh, preset for our texture sets, but mine is uh, also has the alpha channels enabled, so if you see opacity and uh, all that good stuff, then have no fear. I'll also have emissive uh, turned on, that's just the way my substance painter is saved. So we got our base coat here, or our metal coat. Next up we'll enable the base coat and just kind of make it a darker color here. Something like that, a little bit more rough. And then our top coat here is what's going to be the color of the barrel. So I'll go ahead and make this kind of a darker, let's do a darker purple color. Something like that works for me and we'll keep it about the medium or the default uh, roughness which is about right there I believe um, so yeah we'll keep it like that next up what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add a folder here we'll name this color and we will click the top coat here and hold shift and click metal and it'll select anything in between or you can just hold control and click all of them it doesn't matter we'll go ahead and drag and drop those into the color next up I'm gonna add a black mask go over to the left over here to polygon fill and I'll have it selected on uh, mesh fill and we'll do uh, make sure it's at white now you can toggle between these two if you just press X so when it comes to masks anything that is white is information and anything that is black is no information so think of it as one meaning you're putting down something zero meaning you're erasing something so we'll keep that in mind and move forward. Next up, I'm just going to click the barrel and click the top here. I have mine separated uh, for 
ease of use. Um, you don't have to separate yours. I, I separated uh, some of these pieces and joined them back in before I exported them out of Blender, so I have control on which ones I want to fill. So keep that in mind. If you have separated mesh but they're all the same object, it will still work perfectly fine. I actually recommend doing that instead of doing texture sets for each individual object, as that can take a lot of space and it's not really optimized. Um, in case people did want to know, our uh, preset for this file is 4096. You can do it in 4K, 8K, 2K, 1K. You can even do all the way down to, I believe, uh, 240. So I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, we got the color on the uh, barrel here. Next up, what we'll do is we'll add a fill layer here. We'll call this logo. And we'll go to our shelf here. Before we go to the shelf, we'll add a black mask. Right click to do that. And then we'll right click again, add a paint. So this gives us the ability to paint on the barrel if we want. Like I said, white meaning information, black meaning no information. So if I go back over, we can cover that back up. So that's always good to know. Add my paint back there because that controls the too much. So now with this paint layer, we can use alphas or you can use stencils. Stencils for me, I don't really care to use stencils. I much more, more prefer alphas, but sometimes using stencils works better. So I'm just going to search up B, use my logo that I got off of, I believe, some stock site. It was like $3, so I like the way it looked, and that's what we're going to go with. So I'll go ahead and place that there. And if you'll notice how when I place it, it does not follow suit to where it's showing on the screen. That's because Substance Painter loves to do this thing where after you get done using a brush with random uh, jitter and flow and all that good stuff, when you select a different alpha brush, is it loves to keep that. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn all these jitters down. That way, wherever I place it is wherever it's going to go. So we got that place there. Next up, we'll go back in, select B again, get this bigger B. And I'm just trying to find a good place to put it. So I'm going to put the B right here. In fact, we'll go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger. Now, there are uh, multiple ways you can change the size of your uh, brush here. So one way to do it is pressing and holding control and right click and moving your mouse left to right. You can also go up here and adjust the size as well. So next up I'm just going to get my little Stellar Core logo here that I made for my cyberpunk vehicle. Um, feel I felt like that was a suiting logo for this. So we'll go ahead and slap that there as well as right here. Next up I'm just going to search font and the cool thing is is Substance Painter already ships with a couple of fonts. You can make more fonts inside of Substance Designer if you need to or want to. You can also buy or obtain uh, free fonts as well for Substance Painter. It's all up to you, but I like using Orbitron and a couple of other ones, and that's what we're just going to use today. So for this, I'm just going to do something like I did last time. We'll do uh, Synthetic Honey again. And I'm going to change the type to Bold. And if you'll notice, it's cut off. So that doesn't really work for us and that's because of the size down here so if we turn down the size just a little bit it'll end up fitting go ahead and place that there and that looks pretty great to me so now we'll move on now that we have our logo down we can go ahead and change the logo and uh, the roughness and the color, but I kind of want to keep it the same, the same roughness as the the barrel here. So we'll leave the roughness out of it, and we'll go ahead and change the color to a yellow color. 
Kind of like so, but maybe a little bit darker and more muted. And we'll go with that. That looks pretty good to me. Next up, what we can do, we'll go back into our top coat here. I'll move my shelf over. And we'll go over to our smart masks. I love using smart masks. They're really good to use. I highly recommend just going and playing with some of these masks. But we're going to use edges strong. We'll just drag and drop right onto the layer. And if you'll notice, it's inverted because it's using a curvature map. You can go ahead and go to the properties of the curvature map here. And we'll just tick the global invert to true. And if you'll notice, our bottom coat or our base coat is showing through, and that's exactly what we want. Next up for the base coat, I'm going to select the exact same mask, drag and drop that onto the base coat. We will invert the mask. Just kind of play with the global balance until it gets us where we want. And something like that works for me. You don't want to go too crazy overboard with it because it will look a bit goofy, but um, as far as this goes, this works for me. So next up, we've got our edge wear, but our barrel's still looking kind of new and strange, so we got to fix that. So we'll go into and add another layer, a fill layer on top. We'll call this scratches. The caps lock is on. Go back into our smart masks here. We'll just go with stains and scratches. Go ahead and drag that and drop it onto that fill layer there. And if you'll notice, we got a lot of scratches going on. So that works pretty good for me. I'm going to go through just take a look at what we got going on maybe turn down global balance just a little bit so it's not as scratched up now I'll go into the fill layer and actually change the color of the scratches to the color of the base coat there or the top coat rather now all I'm gonna do is just make it darker just slightly darker and we'll go to the height channel of this and kind of turn it down just a little bit I'm gonna go with 0 0.005 and so if we take a look you can kind of see what it's doing but it's not really doing too terribly much maybe we want more scratches maybe we want, we want them deeper well that's all up to you you can change that in any given time you want to because we're using fill layers so we can go in and smart mask so we can go in and just change it any given time we want to so make that a little bit more scratched up and we're looking pretty good so far Next up, what we need is we need a little bit of uh, discoloration as far as this goes. So we'll go back into our color folder here and add another fill layer. I will add a, I'll right click on it and add a bitmap mask. This is a different type of mask. And as you'll see, I started searching cloud here earlier. We'll just select clouds. And if you'll notice, on the back here we have a horrible seam that's perfectly fine we'll just go from UV projection to triplanar projection gives you something like that I'll turn down the balance just a little bit just so we get more variance next up what I'll do is we'll just turn down that layer a little bit just until it gives us some good old discoloration do is we can go in and change this color make it a little bit darker so it's a little bit more subtle 
and it's already making it look like a, a decently used barrel and we're not even got to the fun part yet so moving along Next up, what we can do is we'll add some dirt. Go back into our smart masks again. And we will just go with something simple like sand dust. Drag and drop that onto the layer. We're left with something like this. Now, I've decided I didn't like that just out of the clear blue instantly like that and we will go with something else we'll go with dirt splashes there we go it's making it a lot more dirty really good now what we can do is we can change that to an actual dirt color so we'll go with something kind of like a dark brown if you'll notice it's really dirty and I don't quite like that myself so we can actually go in and add a paint Go up to our brushes here. Select dirt one, whatever you want. I like using dirt one. Just go to black on it. Once we have it set as black, we can go in and kind of uh, erase a little bit of this dirt because some of it is a bit too much. We don't need all this dirt in our lives. We can also go in and turn down the balance on the grunge maps, but nobody likes doing that. By nobody, I mean me. So we're just going to go through, edit some of the dirt, and the way I'm moving the uh, environment light is I'm holding shift and right click, and you can go through and scale for those of you who don't know. For those of you who do know, congratulations, you've been reminded of something you already do know. I'm going to control Z that. I like keeping some of the dirt on the logos as, as it kind of breaks up just the bright yellow color that it is. And now we're looking pretty good. I like the dirt. I'm not too fond of the color, so we can go in and change that. Make it a mute, more muted, kind of uh, gray-brown color. And it looks a lot better to me. So next up, this barrel needs some roughness variation. And we also have to change the roughness of that dirt, because dirt is usually rough unless it's slimy. So, nice roughness there. We'll go in, I'll double click on this and rename it to Roughness. Highly recommend naming stuff as you go along because it can be quite confusing. Especially if you're looking for a layer and you cannot find it. So I'm going to go with Subtle Scratches. Go ahead and drag and drop that onto there. That looks pretty decent to me. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn off everything except for height and roughness. So we'll turn down the roughness, make it shiny whenever the, the light hits it just right. If you'll notice right there, it's kind of visible. You'll see it more in uh, renders than you do anything else, but it just kind of breaks it up a little bit. And another thing I like to do with these layers is kind of just give it a little bit of height just so it kind of adds some height variation to the barrel here, makes it a little bit more interesting for lights to bounce off of. So that looks pretty good to me. Next up, we'll add the uh, optional ground dirt, um, like if it's been sitting outside and getting rained on all day long, dirt splashing back up. You, you gotta think of that kind of stuff whenever you're making realistic props and whatnot is um, you definitely want to think about you know how your object has been like what it's been doing throughout its life so we'll go into this layer into the properties and I'll click on the base color I've already searched up leather uh, this one right here leather rough is a really good uh, dirt material it has really nice color variation I know you're probably thinking wait that's leather though that doesn't make any sense but it does it has nice uh, little swirlies and color variation it looks it makes it look a little bit more natural so we'll go ahead and add some height onto that as well as well as roughness that looks 
that's pretty good. So if we look here, as I turn down the uh, value of this kind of like dirt going on here, you'll realize that those uh, discoloration and color variations that I were talking about, uh, it's actually coming through a lot better now. So it's a little bit too high, so we're going to go into the mask here. Kind of crank it down a little bit. So yeah, you got a dirty barrel here. Looking pretty good. Next up, we'll just add some materials for these caps here. But I'll do it above this layer. So cool thing about Substance Painter, whenever you click on any of these layers here, wherever you add another as where it will pop above. So if I want to fill layer above this folder here, all I have to do is click the folder, press the fill layer, and it'll add it right above that folder. So that's always a good thing to know. Now with this, I'm just going to make it metallic. Kind of crank up the roughness just a little bit, and we'll darken the color. Add a black mask to it, white for information, and we'll just click those two. Now we got our little caps there. So we're looking pretty good. We need to make it look like this thing has had some human contact. You know, people handling it and everything. You can always add fingerprints, uh, handprints, scuff marks, you know, the possibilities are endless. But for me, I'm just going to add a like a writing layer where somebody you know did some handwriting and whatnot so we'll go ahead and add a black mask to that go over to our alphas tab and search up font and I'm gonna go with the handwriting fonts it's the uh, indie flower font that comes with substance painter so we'll go in here and we'll just add a random number we'll do uh, seven eight three for whatever reason make it look like a, a batch number so I'm just going to make this to size 125. And we'll just kind of slap it down. And that's that thing I was talking about. The size jitter, flow jitter, angle jitter, and position jitter all messed up on me. So I'm just going to slap that there. Next up, we'll just add uh, some random stuff on the top. I'm going to do um, k dash. 23, oop, accidentally clicked off, no big deal. We do K-23. Slap that up there. We'll do OK. And then a random initial, so we'll do PKV. So that looks pretty good to me. Next up, what we can do is just kind of make these look a little bit more rough and worn away. I'm going to change the color a little bit on this. Something a little bit darker. And we'll turn the roughness up on it. Now with this black mask, I'll go in and just add a paint to it. Go to our brushes here and go to Dirt 1. Now I'm going to hold control and right click and push up on the mouse and that will change the uh, like the flow of that brush. So I'm just going to turn it down a little bit and make it a bit smaller and just kind of chip away at some of this. Just randomly, not really thinking about it. Kind of like Bob Ross, just go in and add some happy little imperfections and scuffs. Go a little bit hard on one end, you know, make it look like it got rubbed off or whatever. And that looks pretty good to me. So now we have a really dirty barrel. If we don't like the dirt, we can turn it off and ship it like this. Yeah, it's the cool cool thing about uh, doing layers and everything is you can um, have a lot of fun with with the infinite possibilities of things you can do in Substance Painter. I highly recommend it. So really quickly, I mean, we just textured a, a barrel that could could work really well in whatever environment we may need it to be in. 
but uh, one more thing what we'll do is we'll just kind of uh, add like a little shipping label I suppose so I'll add it here I like doing all my stuff underneath the dirt as it kind of works better uh, you don't have to go back and add the dirt on top of the stuff you do so you gotta think of it layer position do you want your information to be underneath the dirt or above the dirt it's all it's all your choice and your decision so I'm gonna add a black mask here I'm gonna go to alphas we'll just search square make it a bit bigger our jitter is still on I'm going to hold shift and control just so it kind of gives us a perfect square but that's going to be a bit goofy because we're on a curved surface but that's good enough for me next up what I can do is add the height to this layer to kind of make it look like a sticker we'll even call it sticker base Next up, I'm just going to add a, another fill layer here. We'll add a black mask to it, and I will change the color to black. Not all the way black, though, because it just doesn't look as good. I'll add a paint to that layer. We'll go to Alphas, and I'm just going to search my logo. a bit bigger and we'll just kind of uh, slap it right there search font again not gaunt I don't know what that word is we'll search font this time we'll go with Orbitron and we'll just add a, uh, a little couple of words to make it look more fancy So, for this barrel, I've decided, uh, you know, this sticker is just going to pretty much describe what is inside the barrel for those of you who cannot read the barrel here. So there, we got us a little label. It will react with light information, and that looks pretty good to me. So if we want to make it look a little bit more realistic, we can go to our sticker base here. I'll add a paint to it. I'll just go ahead and get rid of that, and we will look for kind of a brush that looks like it would chip away, or like it's paint chipped away. So we'll go with that, make sure our jitters are all good. Now, remember what I said. Black is information, white, or black is no information, white is information. I almost screwed that up trying to teach you guys there. And so we'll just add some like chipping and everything to the, uh, the little label here that we got. There, and that looks pretty good to me. One final step is we'll go ahead and just change the color of this sticker base just a little bit. And now we have us a nice completed barrel. Now you don't necessarily have to follow my steps exactly. I definitely recommend playing around and having some fun with the uh, with some of the layers and everything. Um, just enjoy it, you know. Discover some new stuff. Um, it's always good fun to do stuff like that. So one final thing that I'll do, just because I'll add another folder here. And we'll call it top dirt and inside this folder I will add a fill layer add a black mask to the folder I'm just going to do the mesh select here we'll go to the square which is polygon fill 
I'm going to snap to the top by holding shift and alt and left click and dragging. It snaps you to different axes and everything. So I'm just going to draw out a square of what I want to get selected by that mask. That looks good to me. The only problem is, is we did it to everything else. But that's no problem. Go to X again and we'll just get rid of all but the top. So now what we can do with this fill layer here, we'll right click and add a bitmap mask again. And we'll just kind of uh, go through and look like look at what we got. So I'm going to search um, search grain, and we get some grunge stuff like that, and that works for me. I'll go to the size for this here. Kind of turn down or increase the scale rather. Crank down the balance just a little bit. Go to our properties for that fill layer and kind of just turn up the height just a little bit, nothing too crazy, and the roughness. And we'll just go with like a muted uh, brown color again with that. And that's just so we have a little bit more dirt on the top, like it's been sitting for a while. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this video helped you out a little bit. I uh, will definitely be doing more Substance Painter videos in the future, as a lot of you guys seem to be very interested in it. Um, I will also be doing, probably in the future, how to create like a, a smart material that you can reuse over and over again. I feel like that would be something very simple and very useful for a lot of you guys. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if, if you did enjoy it, and it really did help you out, uh, definitely leave a like on the video, consider con subscribing. Um, if you think this is going to be helpful to your friends, please share it out. I uh, also did want to let you guys know that if you feel like you want to, I have a Discord server. It will be linked down in the description. Uh, feel free to join it. Have some fun. I got a little great community going on there. I answer questions all the time with people uh, and occasionally get in there and chat with people as well. So if you want to do that, definitely do that. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and until next time, have fun blending and painting away.